So I uh, did not develop a formal presentation, which is unusual for me because I present a lot, but I do want to talk about this problem from the point of view of district, school district personnel. My uh, primary concern and the concern of all educators is creating an environment that is conducive to learning. And we um, have a number of social programs in our schools under the general heading of positive behavior support where basically the, the expectations at school are to be safe, be responsible, and be respectful. And because we know that when kids behave in those ways, we have an environment that is conducive to learning. And when people don't behave in those ways, it disrupts learning. Um, I have to say that I find this whole debate over what's legal and not legal in terms of uh, how we teach and discipline around social behavior, I find it to be incredibly annoying. Because, again, my concern is not with the law. You know, and I know you guys are lawyers, and so your concern is with the law. My concern is with creating an environment that is conducive to learning. And bullying, whether it happens at school or happens off outside school grounds and then comes on to school, is very, very disruptive to learning. I want you to think back to when you were in middle school or right around that age, and I want you to think of your most negative memories. The odds are very high that your most negative memories have to do with being treated disrespectfully by your peers and or possibly by adults, but mostly by peers. And as one of my colleagues said when uh, a couple of years ago, several of us from the university and from the school district got together to write a bully prevention program that we're calling Expect Respect, one of the authors said that if you are being bullied and the, the social dynamics that, that surround that impact how your peers treat you. So whether it happened on grounds or it happened through the internet at night and emails got sent out to a whole social network, but if it impacts your ability to develop positive social relationships and stay focused at school, it's really hard to understand how that is not impacting school to me. Um, and so what, what Shandine Garcia, my good friend, said is that if you are being bullied, for most middle school kids, and I think high school kids and elementary kids too, about 98% of their energy, of their psychic energy, is going to be spent trying to figure out how to deal with that problem. And they are not going to hear a word we say about Pythagorean's theorem. So um, it's <coughs> fairly clear that schools have typically been given pretty broad latitude in how we discipline disruptive behavior or antisocial behavior or um, negative social dynamics um, when it happens on school grounds. What we're getting really confusing method, uh, messages from um, the, course, the ca court cases is what do we do when it is clearly impacting the dynamics at school. Kids are being ridiculed and being made fun of, they're being excluded, but the actual behavior that got that whole chain of social dynamics started happened outside the school at home on Facebook. Um, we believe, and our policy states, that if it disrupts the school environment, we have the ability to initiate disciplinary action. But we've also been told that we may not be backed up if, in fact, somebody chose to challenge that. Um, so that puts us in a pretty much impossible position. What the heck do we do when we're trying to create a positive social learning environment? We've got stuff going on that, in some cases, as I'm sure you've read, gets so bad that kids are committing suicide. And there have been a number of cases where that's happened um, in the last few years not to mention the the day-to-day -day psychic uh, damage that's being created by 
uh, uh, we have about 17% of our students who indicate that, they're, that they are bullied on a regular basis. We did a school climate survey the last few years uh, with our high school and middle school students. So we have pretty good data on how often this is happening. It's pretty congruent with the data you put up. If you talk about a, 50, uh, a 30 day period, mm -hmm. about 17% of the kids indicated that they've been bullied or harassed in the last 30 days, about 45 to 48% indicated that if you extend the time frame to a year, they've been bullied or harassed in the last year. So it is a significant problem, uh, not only in the data, but I gotta tell you a little story. Uh, a couple of years ago, we wanted to pilot this uh, bully prevention program at Spencer Butte Middle School. And so we got a bunch of students on board and they liked the program and they said, well, this is gonna be really lame if the adults teach it, so we wanna teach it and you, you adults can help if you like. But, uh, so they, we had a number of lessons and, uh, that were delivered to all the kids that were interactive with some role playing and so on around what do you do when people that are, are treating you disrespectfully, what do you do as a bystander, how do you not support it, et cetera, et cetera. So at the end of the year, I was real curious as I wonder how that went out there at Spencer Butte. So the assistant principal said, let's get a focus group and talk to the kids. So she scheduled about 15 kids to meet with me and I went out and talked with them and the meeting was scheduled to last from about 2.15 to about 3.30. Guess what time it was when I left? Pretty close to six o'clock. Now, what kind of academic subject could you create that would get kids to voluntarily stay for three hours after school to talk? You couldn't. But if it's around bullying and harassment, it's not hard. They'll talk about it until they're blue in the face because that is the most important thing to them at school. So my hope is that the courts get this crap worked out because we need to be able to have a policy that we can actually implement with some measure of fidelity. Um, so the, 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 in, in my district, we have people like me and Carmen Urbina, who is a really good friend of mine, and she's our equity coordinator. And we are focused on prevention and developing programs and also on advising principals, what do I do in response when it looks to me like disciplinary action is needed? And so Carmen and I are advising them take action because what we've seen in the courts is that you are more likely to get in trouble for not taking action when you should be than when you don't take action and later a court determines you should have. Um, but the caveat is we don't really know <laughs> if this ever went to court whether you're gonna get backed up or not. And people at the district level are, tend to be the, the district leadership superintendent. And I, I'm just getting to know this current superintendent, so I don't know what his response will be. But the instructional leaders, Carmen and I are a lot more likely to be bold and say, take action. <laughs> and then whether we're gonna actually get backed up at the district level is also variable. And quite frankly, one of the variables that's most annoying as to whether we get backed up is political. Which parents are complaining? Which school? Uh, so that is very discouraging. And again, to me, it's simple. We have a policy that states bullying and harassment will not be tolerated. We have a definition that's reasonably clear. We talk about, uh, in fact, I had our, our district uh, safety specialist said, well, what does will not be tolerated mean? And I said, it means we'll take disciplinary action. Well, it doesn't say that. And I said, well, what the heck would it mean from a student's point of view? If it doesn't mean we would take disciplinary action, it is totally meaningless from a student's point of view. So we get into these really, from my point of view, and I know you guys are becoming lawyers, so you may not think it's silly, but I think it's really silly. Um, and I think that schools need to, be able to develop a policy 
that creates, that helps to create a positive social climate and allows us to take disciplinary action when that doesn't, when, when proactive measures like teaching, prompting, reinforcement, rehearsal don't work. And you may ask, what do you mean, Brianna, by disciplinary action? There are a whole range of things from low level uh, to extreme like expulsion and typically what a principal does is move up the ladder so we start with a teaching exercise we may use mediation between the students we may assign community service as a low-level consequence we may have a detention we may have an in-school suspension but in some cases uh, where the, the bullying is repeated and permanent physical injury either happened or came really close to happening my advice would be to expel the student and put them in a setting. When I say expel, we don't, we don't not provide education, but we would provide education in an alternative, uh, safer setting. So uh, like I said, I didn't really prepare a presentation, but that's kind of, uh, I wanted to share a little bit with you the, the sort of dilemma that we at the school district currently find ourselves in uh, because what we'd like to be able to do is establish a policy, um, implement reasonable discipline to maintain a positive social climate, and then be backed up by the courts. 